made by trains by <laughs> No questions will be answered. Do not look him direct in the eye. Do not leave home without it. <laughs> and, uh... Really? Testing, testing. One, two. Yeah, it's much better. What's going on with yours? Oh, maybe. I'll, um... Hang on, I'll tell the boy. Your bass is up. Are you two... Your bass is up. Why do you whisper green grass? Okay, so welcome to the first panel of the Armageddon Christchurch. Uh, congratulations on surviving the entry process. It is a rigorous um, exam, and there are um, uh, at least a couple of thousand people outside who have not yet passed it. So, God help us all. Um, so <laughs> Isn't he lovely? Um, so, uh, if I could have a huge round of applause for our first guest of the show, Mr. Mark Hadlow. <laughs> now, um, um, you've got two options. You can come up here to this lovely microphone and ask some questions of Mark, or he'll hunt you down. Um, and if we don't get any really interesting questions, um, Mark, um, we were serious about the train noises, he will just keep going with that. So. Bill, thank you so much. Very kind. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky. Um, Bill and his team do a fantastic job taking us around New Zealand with Armageddon. So um, give him a little round of applause because he is absolutely sensational having his team. Thank you, Bill. Um, the Hobbit. Unbelievable. We had the most extraordinary experience. Six, seven New Zealanders cast as, I guess, what you would call supporting cast in a major motion picture, uh, not just one, but three. When we first were contracted to do The Hobbit, we only knew we were doing two films. Then we found out Peter shot 21 million meters of film, and he decided to make it into a trilogy. So we, of course, were delighted. Recontract. <laughs> and um, not just from that perspective, because we think it has actually made a very good trilogy, um, going from The Hobbit, to Desolation of Smaug and then there and back again. And of course, we've got that coming out in Christmas again this year, so it's been amazing. The ride has been sensational. From Polaris, Central Otago, um, top of uh, Tongariro, um, uh, Rupehu, all over the place. Wellington, up on the high Taitai in the studio, and meeting, of course, some of the greatest actors in the world, i.e. Sir Ian McKellen, uh, Kate Blanchett. Hugo Weaving, uh, Billy Connolly, Stephen Fry, uh, uh, Luke Evans, um, you name it, we were, all, uh, they were just amazing, let alone some of the great New Zealand actors that we have in this country, who I got to work with, uh, including my own friends and colleagues, the other dwarves, who are Dino Gorman, um, Jed Brophy, who played my middle brother, um, William Kircher, Peter Hamilton, and of course John Callan, um, and myself. So we were very, very lucky and um, we all enjoyed ourselves unbelievably. We had some extraordinary things that happened. Uh, the sets were unbelievable. The people that worked on the film were unbelievable. There were three and a half thousand people all up by the end of the movie that had worked on The Hobbit. So not only was it a sensational employment opportunity for New Zealanders, uh, but it was really uh, an extraordinary experience. I mean, The Lord of the Rings we thought was pretty good when that came out. We thought, having been made in New Zealand, that was it. That was, uh, nothing could top that. But I think The Hobbit goes one step further in the fact that we um, incorporated such a great story. Uh, more so from the perspective of it being such a boy's own story. I mean, how many of you read The Hobbit when you were kids? I mean, I read it when I was about eight or nine. Uh, how many of you haven't read The Hobbit? It's actually worth having to read. It's really interesting. Because the, um, the amazing thing is, it's pretty close to what the film is like. A lot of people have said, but I didn't read this certain bit in, in the film uh, that was in the book, or vice versa. And of course, if you um, know anything about Tolkien, he wrote a whole lot of appendices to do with the, the story. And Peter went through these with a fine tooth comb. And it's taken a lot of um, material out of that and put that into the film. 
there were aspects of filming that were quite frightening. The Stone Giants filming in pouring, absolutely torrential rain in the studio, being wet every day for about a week. Um, we had the best time whatsoever in the barrels, and no doubt there'll be some questions about the barrels, and we'll tell you all about that when we get there. The barrels has to be the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. It was like a Disney ride, but we'll talk about that because someone's going to ask a question. We rode horses. Oh yeah, I now ride a horse. Interesting story about the horse riding though. My wife, who is actually a very good rider, my eldest daughter is a good rider, and my youngest daughter is a good rider, and my son is a good rider. The only person that didn't know how to ride a horse properly was me, and I started two and a half years ago. My wife, Jane, came out to watch us doing our horse riding classes, and she was standing next to the trainer, and she said, oh, for sake, he's riding horribly. Get him to take his feet out of the stirrups. So I spent all of my classes with my feet out of the stirrups and I rode properly because then I bounced properly because when I was in the stirrups I was playing, pretending I was on Black Beauty. The amazing thing about my training was that I rode Tom Cruise's horse from The Last Samurai. What a beautiful horse and I was actually on him and the trainer, Steve, who was fantastic. Um, uh, hit the horse to lie down on command, so I'm on him and I would just do give the command and he would lie down and I would step off and then step on the horse and he would get up. Oh! Oh! I was a stun rider. It was fantastic. Um, but we had some great time. We learned, uh, Steve, um, um, who was our sword master, um, was absolutely fantastic. So we learned a whole lot of sword and fighting. And of course, training. We went to dwarf training, which was absolutely extraordinary. We had to learn how to walk like a dwarf. I don't know how you do that, but we did. And we were trained by a guy who was um, a professional in Cirque du Soleil for nearly a decade and was an Olympic champion. Um, he was absolutely extraordinary, Terry. And he was always saying, get down, guys, get down. I can't get down. So we became, we went to dwarf school, yeah. Sounds very, very prejudiced, you know, like it sounds, sound, you shouldn't say things like that, but we did, we went to dwarf school and learned how to walk like a dwarf. But we weighed, um, our costumes didn't help us either. We, um, our costume weighed about 7 kg, our shoes weighed about 4 kg. Then we put all the other stuff on it, like our backpacks when we first started on the quest. That weighed about 17 or 18 k. One of us got on the scales, I think Graham McTavish and John got on the scales and our total body weight with the pack was about 140 kg. That's for us who were felt, of course. Some of them, the boys, were not quite so felt. Some of them weighed over 6 million kg. Um, we had some great adventures. But look, I, I, I could talk forever uh, just from the perspective of what I experienced, but I'm sure some of you are dying to ask some questions. So that's what this is all about. So I can get you the inside goss on uh, people like um, Orlando Bloom and um, you know, yeah, I know, I saw that. You see, oh, I love you, Orlando. I love you. I used to sing that to him every day. He used to get really worried about it. No, but I sat, I sat in the same makeup caravan. He's a really nice guy. He was such a nice man. He really was, and um, it was so nice to meet meet some of these big Hollywood stars who were so nice. Kate Blanchett. Um, I'm not quite sure how to, but she is just the most intelligent, wonderful, extraordinary woman I think I've met. Ian McKellen, a darling man, and the doyen of New Zealand Theatre. What's happened? Oh, my daughter! Get in here. Get up here. I want you to meet someone who's very special in my life. This is my daughter, Olivia Hadlow. Hi, everyone. And, yeah, she's amazing. She is my um, absolute... Uh, you look fantastic. Did John bring you down? John Callan brought you down. He's probably ruined you. Hasn't he? Probably gave you lots of lollies and stuff. Sit down, enjoy it. On the couch or sit down. Nice. So glad you're here. See you in a minute, darling. Um, so, questions. Let's go. Who's got a question? Someone